A lot of people have talked about the very prominent changes in 1.4.4. We got Shimmer, Sword Updates, Pets, the Legendary Seed, and a metric f ton of quality of life features. But what about the more obscure changes? Well, I've compiled a list of the few obscure changes that wouldn't normally be covered in all the highlight videos. If you want to, you can think of this as a useless information plus. All of these are from the Terraria changelog, which is posted here on the wiki. You can also see it in changelog.txt within this folder if you're playing on Steam like me. Also note that these are some arbitrarily chosen changes. There are definitely more out there, it's a pretty big update. Alright, whatever. Let's just get it. Number 1. This one is the most obvious. Instant killing attacks like the Empress, Dungeon Guardian, and Daytime Skeletons are no longer dodgeable. This means that you don't need to stick to Hollowed Armor exclusively for Daytime Empress anymore. This probably makes the fight significantly harder, sadly. A related change is also how Holy Dodge actually works. Previously, Holy Dodge only had a 25% chance to proc per hit while off cooldown. This was kinda useless since weapons attack so quickly in Terraria, and it was also kinda dumb, so they changed it to a 100% in 1.4.4. 2. The ghost that spawns in Hardcore after death is now slightly faster. Wow. Cool. 3. Voodoo demons have been added to the lifeform analyzer, so just in case you need to go hunt for those in your playthrough, it's a lot simpler now. 4. I actually made a useless information on this fact already. In expert mode, both the Frost Moon and Pumpkin Moon gain a point multiplier of 2x, as the enemies are harder. Master had no point multiplier, despite being even harder. They successfully rectified this in 1.4.4, and now Master has a multiplier of 2.5 times. 5. The Eternia Crystal has been buffed by 2 times in Expert and 3 times in Master, meaning the Old One's army for these versions is much easier if you're to end up in a sticky situation. 6. The Kimono now sits properly instead of you doing this weird right angle leg stand whenever you sit down. The Acid Venom Flask also says it inflicts Acid Venom now, not Venom. Both of these I've mentioned previously in a useless information video as well. 7. The Enchanted Sundial now glows if it's charged and automatically charges when a Blood Moon or Eclipse occurs. A neat indicator without having to try or count. 8. If you didn't know, On Fire and Frostburn both have upgraded variants called Hellfire and Frostbite, which are basically the same but more powerful. While these debuffs did exist in the previous updates, hardwood weapons have been updated so a lot of these inflict the more powerful debuff now. This even includes potions, like the Inferno Potion. 9. You know how it was always said to carry wire cutters with you into the jungle temple so you can snip the wire? Well, you can't do that anymore, and you can't even see the wire till you beat Golem. 10. Buff and debuff caps have been changed so the Terrarian can now be on 44 buffs or debuffs before overdosing. Enemies can also have 20 debuffs instead of 5 now, if you are somehow able to inflict that many on an enemy. I really can't see myself getting to 44 buffs in vanilla, but I've already had that occur many times on modded, so maybe it'll be of use. 11. Crystal Shards can now even grow in the Sandy Cleansed Deserts. Pearl Sand and its variants can now grow like this. It's kinda weird to see that, but yeah. 12. Explosive Bullets now don't deal self-damage, so I guess they're slightly safer to use. This self-damage was actually reasonably annoying before, so this is a welcome change. 13. They also nerfed Holy Arrows again, because of course they did. With a 17% nerf to star damage, I wonder what it will actually take to balance a day of a Stormbow at this rate. 14. The last prism used to not be able to get modifiers that affected knockback, despite having a knockback value of 0.25. This locked out of many of the best modifiers, like Mythical. Now it can, so Mythical last prism it is. 15. Fledglinglings are great for mobility in the early game, and they were so easily obtainable as a 33.3% drop from sky chests. Now I'm using past tense for a reason. Read Logic reversed the change they made in 1.4.1, and now Lucky Horseshoe spawn in the sky once more. Fledgling wings now need to be fished up, or you need to get the rare 1 out of 40 chance to get secondary loot. Ouch. 16. The Magic Conk and Demon Conk's animations have been changed to be on par in speed with the Magic Mirror. Also, for all the people who tell me that I pronounce Conk wrong, it's a valid pronunciation. 17. Ore-based bricks are now 5 times cheaper, as now you only need 1 ore per 5 blocks of ore brick you need to craft. Likewise, Shroomite Plating also got cheaper, going from a 1 to 15 to 1 to 25 ratio. That's 66.6% more brick per bar. 18. Previously, it was impossible to complete the beast tree and therefore obtain a universal pylon on For the Worthy or Not the Bees. For example, in For the Worthy, it was impossible to get the demon beast tree entry since only voodoo demons spawn. Now, that has been fixed, so yay for the completionists. 19. Throwing multiple guide voodoo dolls into lava will have, quote, unwanted consequences. 20. Finally, expert and master mode pillars now don't have the extra kill requirement to beat them. Pillars of any difficulty now require only 100 kills, like normal mode. Also, after the Moonlord is defeated for the first time, it only takes 50 kills. 
for haters of the pillar events, like me, this is also pretty good. Alright, that's it. I've pulled these from the changelog so they should be perfectly accurate unless I forgot how to read. Well, anyways, subscribe if you enjoyed, thank you for watching, and good day to you all.